Okay, in this video we are going to look at key stage 4 GCSC stem cells. Um, the outcomes we're looking for is I will be able to give examples of how stem cells can be used to treat illnesses, that's the sort of basic aim. I will be able to explain the differences between how adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells uh, work, that's the sort of medium sort of level. And then maybe as well be able to apply or explain which type of stem cell uh, treatment is suitable for certain ailments. Um, so that's the harder thing. So it's, it's a sort of step video this. So let's think about um, initially things growing up. So we've got four examples here. We've got the babies down the bottom and we've got the parents up the top. Now what's the difference? Parents and babies. Now the babies are looking good, aren't they? They're all looking lovely and perfect. So the green has got green and yellow to yellow and red to red and blue to blue. But think about it, when, when babies grow up, um, sometimes they're not quite as perfect as the original DNA. So here we've got a block missing. Here we've got a block missing and something added on that's a bit different. Here we've just got a difference and here we've got something sticking out. Um, and all that's to do with um, how the genetic information is copied or changed. <clears throat> now let's think back to key stage 3. We've got some different panels here of information. So we've got specialised cells and tissues, and we've got some examples of a muscle cell, a root hair cell, a palisade cell, plant tissue, so that would be xylem and phloem bundle, a vascular bundle in a, in a leaf, and some muscle tissue. We've got three here, now what could they be? Let's have a look. We've got a sperm cell with a tail and a head, and this one, a round one, which is a, a red blood cell, and here we've got a long nerve cell. Quite a complex one, this. So what have we got over here, then? We've got specialised cell, which is this one. So if we go back to the, this is a muscle cell, but then, of course, specialised cells form tissues. And tissues form organs, so muscle goes to heart, and then organ forms a system, and that forms an organism. So we've got a muscle cell, a muscle tissue, the heart, the circulatory system, and that makes up part of the human body. We've also got, that you might have done in Key Stage 3, about organisms with specialised cells can function more efficiently and effectively by we have a cell and a nucleus and it starts to divide it splits becomes smaller we have two cells a replica so the key point here is for cells tissues and organs similar specialized cells can be grouped together and form tissues tissues form organs and organs form systems the whole thing is called an organism of which you are an organism Now let's look in more detail at embryonic stem cells. Now, the key fact that we really need to remember is that embryonic stem cells, which are unspecialized cells that can de develop into any type of cell, are only found in early stages of life. So look at the pictures here. We've got humans start with one cell which divides over and over to produce the baby. Now there are lots of technical words in this. <coughs> But in essence, here's a sperm and an egg, they fuse together, they then start to divide 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 in a geometric progression until we have a massive bundle of cells and they have words like blastocyst and things like that and eventually it becomes a fetus and eventually we grow a baby. Now, the, an embryonic stem cell is found in a blastocyst or a 5 day old embryo. Now a blastocyst contains around a hundred cells in total. These cells are unspecialized so they can replicate into any type of specialized cell. So there's my stem cell which, which has come from all of these cells. So what we're talking about when we harvest one of these cells, so let's go over to here, when we harvest an embryonic stem cell we use discarded embryos for fertility treatments. This is controversial with many religious groups 
But in essence, a blastocyst is not a baby. Clearly, it's just a load of cells, and I'm going to talk about in a second here, they are unspecialized cells. Now the clever bit is, they can be controlled in a lab. So we isolate one cell, we give it some treatment, we won't say what that is at the moment, and it makes it into a specialized cell. So in which case this is a skin cell, and then it's altered and implanted into a patient with an illness. Now the clever thing is, is that embryonic stem cells can make any type of specialized cell. Or when we use the special term, this is called differentiation, i.e. they're different. Now the adult stem cells are different as they can only produce one type of specialized cell in the area of the body they're found. So we do get skin stem cells or liver stem cells, but they can only ever make themselves and only ever replicate into themselves. So remember we said embryonic stem cells are ones that are developing to any type of cell and are only found when we're producing a baby, but it's that part before it's got that far. So it's right at the start from maybe a fertility treatment. Let's look at the adult stem cells. Here we've got a really great picture. Adult stem cell, the nucleus starts to split. Can you see that long bar and that long bar? That's actually split the nucleus. And then the two split, and you can see when, look, you compare the size originally to the size now, they split and got smaller, then they will absorb nutrients and expand. Now the adult stem cells are used to repair body tissues, e.g. skin, in the same area of the body in which they're found. And for example, bone marrow stem cells can turn into any of the usual blood cells that are found in the body. So an adult bone marrow cell will differentiate to a red blood cell, a platelet, a white blood cell, or a stem cell. So they're kind of like a special group there. But we can't make other specialized cells. That's why embryonic ones are really cool. But adult ones are also useful. Now specialized cells, they cannot divide. And after a while they die and must be replaced by stem cells which are divided. So the average blood cell only lasts for 120 days. And then we need those adult stem cells in the bone marrow to keep producing. That's why we have a problem if we have something wrong with our bone marrow and it's really serious. Now, new developments in gene therapy have shown that we can turn an adult stem cell into an embryonic stem cell by reprogramming it. So we take this embryonic stem cell and we take a hairless skin cell and we mix them up together in a very clever way and we make a new skin cell with hair. Now the key fact is adult stem cells are unspecialized cells that can develop into many but not all types of cells. So they're not quite as good as those embryonic ones and they're found in certain areas of the body only. Now here's some information all about skin grafts. So used for centuries no one knew exactly why they worked until fairly recently. And the reason is because the skin is particularly rich in stem cells. You lose thousands all the time. Mild cuts and burns, the stem cells work to repair the damaged tissue. In severe burns, the stem cells are destroyed. So the doctors have to take the skin from an undamaged area. Now there is an object in carrying out skin graft. If a person suffers burns, only the, the skin from that same person could be used as a skin graft. If the doctors tried to use skin from another person, the immune system would reject that graft. So in trials, scientists are now trying to take a stem cell from a person and modify it genetically to turn it into this clever embryonic cells, stem cell and make a skin cell culture. For example, we could make as much skin as the person needs to repair the burns without having to take skin from other areas of the body, which is often very painful. There's there's some skin that's actually grown. Baldness. Male baldness is mainly caused by too much of a type of protein in the skin, or for women, a hormonal imbalance. It's a localised effect and it can be reversed in some people. So the adult skin cells with the ability to grow hairs can be taken from another part of the person's body, i.e. under your arm, and the adult uh, skin stem cells can then be separated from the other cells in the sample by use of a centrifuge, so that spins the, 
cells around and separates them out. The adult skin cells which have been separated from the normal cells are the only cells which are then injected into the patient's scalp and hair growth starts again. Transplants cannot prevent previous hormonal or protein type problems that can reoccur. Transplants can only be permanent if the underlying problems are fixed. And in trials, Japanese researchers took hairless mice that look like this one here and used complex techniques to merge the embryonic cells with skin cells to make a new skin stem cell, which would grow hair. They implanted the new cells into the skins of mice and it took 21 days to grow these new hair cells. Now what we can do is take the nucleus from one cell and combine it with another cell to produce a genetically modified cell. It's a complex process but simply shown here where we've merged these two cells. Some people are getting quite upset about that because potentially we could be merging two different human beings into one cell from the two. So we're merging information potentially. Now bone marrow. Here we've got um, the top of a femur and you can see the bone marrow, the yellowy bit. We sometimes get infections such as tuberculosis and the bone marrow starts to produce too many or too few of one type of cell. Often cancer treatments such as radiotherapy also kill bone marrow. Now bone marrow has an important job to do in the body and the skin cells in the marrow are able to produce exact copies of themselves as well as being able to produce red blood cells, white cells and platelets. We call that, remember, differentiation we said, different cells. So for bone marrow treatment we extract adult stem cells from a donor and then inject them into a patient where they differentiate. The patient will often have a treatment such as chemotherapy or strong drugs to kill all of the cells before their treatment so the white cells don't kill the new donor cells. Now the body of the donor is able to replace the bone marrow cells within six weeks. After donating most donors are back to their usual routine in a few days. Now the last one to look at I think is blindness and the cells in the eye can stop working for a variety of reasons, damage, infections, excess pressure inside the eye and diabetes. Stem cells can help the eye recover by taking the embryonic stem cells from a donor embryo and culturing them to grow into retina type cells found at the back of the eye. The stem cells are then injected into the patient and as the cells are from a donor they can be rejected completely or grow into tumours or cancers inside the eye. Powerful drugs can help prevent this and must be taken for a few months after the operation. Here's Marcus Hilton, who was the first European patient to get this treatment. And you can see before and afters for all sorts of people there, different patients growing cataracts. That after the treatment, they are really looking much better, aren't they, those eyes? A better method would actually be to take adult stem cells from the patient and engineer them into embryonic cells. That would avoid the rejection and just allow the regeneration. Now here's a quick summary of everything. So you can pause at this point and look at the focus, the conditions, the treatment and the problems. And there are two key points there from previous slides. A quick check would be to run through and see what you can do now, whether you can answer those three points. Are you a basic person, a medium or studying things at a higher level? And finally, some extra thinking. The adult stem cells, we, we call them multipotent cells because they have the potential to give rise to a variety of cells. A blood stem cell that can develop into several types of cell but cannot develop into brain cells or other type of cells. And these occur at the end of a long series of cell divisions that form um, from, the, from the embryo cells that are terminally differentiated or that they are considered to be permanently committed to a specific function. Now embryonic stem cells, we call it pluripotent or pluripotency which means the ability to divide into all the types of cells except extra embryonic tissue so they cannot make umbilical cords or placenta quite interesting and we've got the groups of cells there to remind you which which goes where now the last one totipotency now that is the ability of a single cell to divide and produce all the differentiated cells in an organism, including extra embryonic tissues. An example would be a zygote, so that's the fertilized um, egg and sperm that are starting to divide, or a fertilized egg at the start of life. So it's a really very interesting world, these cells. So we've covered today stem cells, and hopefully address the three main outcomes. 
Certainly if you uh, are not sure of the last two, you can always rewind the video. Thank you, Q.